All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be talking to an individual with a big fight going at Deerfoot Inn and Casino. It's happening in Calgary, and it goes later on in the month. It is happening September 28th. We've got Jesse McMillan taking on the returning Gwyn Lewis, and I've got Gwyn returning on the show. How's it going, man? It's really good. Thanks for the call, Dylan. Yeah, no, it's good having you on what looks like a very, you know, big card all around and everything like that. And I notice you, you know, have been kind of inactive this year and like this is your first fight of 2019. Why did this card feel like, you know, the best opportunity for you to kind of be coming back and like reassert yourself in the local scene? Well, it's 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 mostly related to my personal world. So uh, the last fight I totally botched, had a, had a little whoopsie in my personal world and, and it was really just a new career shift, moving houses, um, a lot of things like that. So I actually had a lot of travel for my new role at work and uh, spent, I would say, the, f- the first quarter of the year really on the road um, through the summer, sort of doing that too. But uh, I have a really close relationship with Mike and the team at Dakota. Uh, they're great guys, and, and they took the summer off as well. So it felt like now coming up into the fall, they were getting going again, and it was the right time for me to get going too. It gave me time to uh, regroup, recamp, and, and get ready for uh, for this next one here. Yeah, and do you have any unique like learning experiences from taking a loss as opposed to like lessons you learned from victory? I mean, I only ask because that was the initial you know career loss you've had. It's the only blemish on the record. So, do you get unique lessons from defeat that maybe you don't get that you achieve from victory? Yeah, that uh, I mean, it obviously it sucked in the moment, and uh, you know, I, I I do feel like if I fought that guy ninety nine times out of a hundred, I beat him. It's just that day I beat myself. Um, I, I was flat and it's, you know, the lesson was really in learning about that mental preparedness and looking for, uh, certain signs and certain bits. I physically was ready. I, I was ready to go, but basically stood there and let a Mexican opponent punch me in the face for six rounds. And so I'll, uh, I'll definitely never let that happen again. Well, I mean, it seems like you, you know, assessed the performance pretty well and just, you know, learned from it and everything like that. So it doesn't seem like you're going to be like repeating things here. But, you know, checking out your opponent, it seems like they've got like a lot of experience to their benefit. And I was actually talking to Michael Short about this fight a little bit earlier today. And he was kind of talking about how Mac Millen has this record whereby he's like taking on a lot of these hot prospects. And you could argue that his record should look a bit different. Maybe he gets, you know, certain decisions not in his favor when he's like the away guy going forward and fighting the surging prospects on their home turf sort of thing. So facing a very tough guy here in a lot of ways, I'm, I guess I'm curious what your overall assessment is of Mac Millen and just like the skill set he brings to the table yeah 100% Mike's Mike's on par there he's fought some tough guys he's gone the round with some of the best around and um, you know boxing's funny because everyone makes it about the record but it's it's often about who you fight and, and how you did in that performance as well and and Jesse's a good example of that so we're not really looking at the record more looking at his um his fortitude and his ability. So I know he's in a, in a stronger camp than ever. He's looking good. So I'm expecting the best version of, of him to step in the ring with me here on the 28th. And, and uh, he should be expecting the same out of me as well. Yeah, and me and Mike were talking about that as well, and he was saying that, you know, I mean, you could take, like, a cheese sandwich and give it, like, a 15-0 and record if you, like, book it properly. It's just sometimes you don't get the most, like, nuanced read on these guys' records. Like, presumably you'd think a guy with, like, a winning record is going to be some kind of world beater, but then sometimes you look at the quality of competition and it's not necessarily there, and then sometimes there's the inverse with that. So, yeah, boxing's an interesting game in that kind of regard. I think, yeah, too many people make it about the record. Yeah, and there's there's all these pockets of guys. For example, there's guys in Southeast Asia and on islands no one's heard of with 150 and 0 records that you know unconfirmed, unvalidated. They're, they're, so everybody makes it about the wins, but uh, you know if you never put yourself out there, um, you know you never really know. And and if you look at kind of the yesteryear and all the best in the sport, they you know Ali's and and Tyson's and them of the world, they, they all have you know, losses and, and it's something people kind of forget. These guys fought real true champions at their prime and two guys going at their prime is uh, really what we want to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's definitely the, that's definitely the way to do it for sure. But it seems like you get, 
great receptions whenever you come out to these different cards and stuff like that. Are we expecting a similar large turnout for this one? Are we going to be seeing a sea of winning shirts all throughout the Deerfoot Inn and Casino? <laughs> That's the hope. That's the hope. I, uh, I still got a box of those in my trunk. I keep them everywhere I go. Um, I just found out the show is sold out. I sold out of the tickets I had. Um, so it'll be very well attended and yeah, I'm hoping to rally the local crowd to, uh, to the winning team and see if we can make some noise there. And I was talking to Mike about this too, but the vibe at Deerfoot in a casino seems a bit different than maybe some of the other venues Dakota has ran just in as far as there's this like intimate close knit kind of a vibe. Maybe it gives off this like pressure cooker kind of a feel like it's like a lot of people, you know, in this like very concentrated area and the energy from the fans probably, you know, more concentrated as a result of that so i'm kind of curious like does performing in a space like that that has that kind of pressure cooker atmosphere does that inform your performance or shape anything you do in the ring at all it it does help and and you know i've been lucky with the exception of my last fight i, I really had a lot of noise the whole out um uh, you know especially cheering on my side which helps but it, it does it's it's a lot more intimate. You can hear a lot more. Uh, the sound sort of radiates around you a lot more. Whereas when it's a bigger stadium, like we had uh, the Zab Judah fight in in uh, the Grey Eagle Event Center, there, it's uh, it's a lot more hollow. So the sound doesn't really hit you as hard. But but in these smaller venues, you you hear everything, and you're you're right there along with the crowd for it. Yeah, probably just like galvanizes your performance and just like inspires you that much further. I mean, I imagine you're inspired and have a laser focus when you're in there anyway, but it probably just like, I guess, metastasizes that feeling even more so, I would think. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's all it's all a vibe. It's all part of the atmosphere. Uh, for you, every now and then you do pick out a single a single phrase. You're not supposed to, but every now and then you, you do. And, and sometimes you hear silly things. Sometimes you hear the, you know, the things you need, but... Uh, but largely in, the, in those smaller venues, yeah, it makes this atmosphere, this feeling of, of real, true uh, kind of enthusiasm. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like there's that, you know, tangible enthusiasm in the training room, too. Like a lot of great guys to work with at Beaumont Boxing Club. But I imagine you're working with, you know, Devin Reddy and probably Jesse Arnett a fair bit ahead of this one. And I'm kind of curious, like, who maybe some of the other training partners are ahead of this key bout you have coming up here. You know, we, we're really lucky at Beaumont. We got a great team there. Um, we got fantastic amateurs as well, and I, I know they're not on many radars yet, but uh, we got Odain, we got Rot, we got uh, Aziz. We, we got a whole bunch of these guys that we spar with, and, and some of them are just world-class speed, world-class head movement, world-class jabs, and, and so we got kind of a pool to pick out of, and we, we train different things with that they help. And, and then, of course, yeah, Desi and, and Devin are – top guys those guys are they push me every time i'm i'm with them um you know devin's unreal and his his sort of mental iq with with boxing and his ability to to move and adjust on the fly so working with these guys has been you know my single greatest asset since i went pro really yeah, it's great to have that fight IQ growth. I mean, obviously you get that from getting out there and getting in some of your fights that you've been in and stuff like that. And we talked about that after the first full six round fight you had there after the Wayne Smith fight. But to have that IQ growth in the gym as you're going through camp, I mean, hugely invaluable. Absolutely. The, you know, the the value of a minute and of a second, you know, really, boxing really uh, teaches you that. But when you do six rounds of it, um, you know, that's when that IQ really comes into play. No one can sprint for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. But if you if you can really be smart about it, you put the right bouts of it out where you need to. And that's that's what it's all about is knowing when and how and where to put the right energy in the right time. Yeah, definitely, man. And as far as like allocating your energy towards certain things, I got, I'm kind of curious about the next fight. I mean, obviously not overlooking the September 28th fight, but I see Dakota has a card coming up in November. Is that something you'd be interested in getting on? Is that maybe too quick of a turnaround or are you looking to have like maybe a busier schedule in lieu of not really having you know many fights in the calendar year well we had a really busy schedule when we started so it was it was six fights i was booked for one of the shows fell through but uh uh yeah so i am talking to dakota about getting on to the november one that's absolutely part of the plan um you know of course we're not looking past the current out we got to get through that one first and uh and figure that out but um 
you know, it's good to be busy as long as I can balance things. And, and like I said, I'll never let what happened to me in the last fight happen again. So, so it's, it's more about balance and, and the right amount of time to prepare and the right amount of time to, uh, to polish off before the fight too. Yeah. It seems like you have great insights into like what the next step is going to be and everything like that. So, I mean, that's great to hear, man, but you've been great with your time. I'm curious. So if there's anything you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping things up here though. No, it should be a, a great show. There's going to be um, some really great bouts. Actually, uh, the guy that uh, Devin's up against, um, Brian Samuel, I, I fought him three times in the amateurs. I saw those two fight each other at least three times. I think they did it five times. That'll be an all-out war, I have no doubt. Uh, and then mine and Jesse's fight. I, again, I'm expecting the very best of both of us, and we both tend to be grinders. So, so it'll be one of those, you know, two grinders up against each other bout. Should be, should be nonstop action. So, should be a great show. Yeah, it's a stacked card, and like you said, a lot of great fights all around. Devin's fight's going to be compelling. I mean, Candy Wyatt fighting is always a good time, but yeah, I'm very much excited for this fight, too. Gwen Lewis taking on Jesse McMillan. It's a great tilt over at Deerfoot Inn and Casino, and in Calgary is where that is rolling forward. Always a great time there, checking out the Dakota shows, and yeah, just appreciate all the time and insights. Gwen, best of luck with the rest of your preparations, and enjoy the rest of your day, too, man. Thanks so much, Dylan. Love the show. Appreciate you spending the time with me.